Colts are in a really tough spot. The defense is especially in a tough spot because through two weeks, they've been terrible. There's no other way to say it. Really, really poor performances against Houston and then at Green Bay have left this team 0-2 looking awful on the defensive side of the ball. So that means Gus Bradley's got to figure this stuff out. You can't swap out all the players, right? You can change the scheme a little bit, but you can't swap out all the players. So you can't go scorched earth and say, look, we suck. Because then they lose hope, and you can't lose hope. You're two weeks in, so Gus Bradley has got to go to this team and say, look, you're my guys. Now we got to use what we've learned against Houston and against the Packers, get after it against the Bears. It sounds like that's what Gus Bradley's doing. But you're going to hear him say something that's got me really, really troubled. And that is that simple is better. That through simplicity, this team plays better on the defensive side of the ball. Either he's throwing something out there and trying to chum the water for the Bears and put them in a spot where they get really, really simple and expect the Colts to be simple in their concepts. Or, you know what, he's going to go back to doing Gus Bradley stuff, which is being essentially predictable and relying on the qualitative play of his team to lift that defense and get a different result. Is this team good enough to do that? That's the question that's going to be answered on Sunday. If indeed Gus does revert back to utter simplicity in what he does. Right. I, I think that, you know, we owe, have a responsibility to kind of talk through this, not only with our team, but just here, you know, and I think, first of all, give Green Bay credit. There, it's a challenging offense. There's some eye control issues, a lot of shifts and motions and things like that. So that was it. The, what the issue is, it's, it's not just one thing. There's a few things, right? And it starts with me as a play caller, getting us in the right call, executing the call, things like that. You know, I take full responsibility for that. I think also, though, you got to look at there's, you know, there's a bust on a play. There's a, a, a missed tackle on a play. So there's a few things that we looked at that said, all right, it's a shared responsibility. It's not just one thing. We got to correct all these things and get them right. So you know, that, that's what we saw, it, you know, especially in the first quarter. The first quarter was about as poorly as you can play, I think. You know, it wasn't very good. Obviously, they had a lot of explosives, and it was on the perimeter. And we had to settle down a little bit. And I thought midway through the second quarter, uh, our guys settled down a little bit. And I think the stats showed that part of it. Um, you know, I can give you stats. Hey, we got better in the second half and all that. But it is what it is. And that's what our, you know, focus is on right now is correcting these things. And it always comes back to fundamentals and execution. And we just got to execute better. And then one quick follow-up um, with DeForest, uh, you know, being helped off and crutched in the locker room. If he has to miss time, I guess, what would that mean for this team? Well, first of all, what does he mean to the team? And then how do you, I guess, adjust if he has to miss? Sure. Well, I mean, he means a great deal to us, right? He's a strong presence in that D-line room. And not only the D-line, but the whole defense. I mean, they look to him. They see him on the field. They have great trust in him and know that, you know, he's going to play his tail off. So that part of it, you know, hopefully it's, we get good news and we can move forward with it. Um, if not, then, you know, we'll have next guys up, you know, Tommy and Taven and Raekwon and Grove, and we'll utilize those guys and position them where they have a chance to succeed. Nate. Gus, I think what people are so alarmed by is just that it happened two weeks in a row. We just haven't seen this group get run over two weeks in a row quite like that. So from, from your spot, is this, is there a pride issue here? Is it an effort issue? Like how, how does it go to where, you guys seem like you're on alert to fix it, and then and then it happens again. Right. Well, I, I do think, like I said, go back and, you know, to say Green Bay is a tough run scheme and things like that, and the eye control, you know, I think our guys were thinking, shoot, is, is, is Willis going to keep it? You know, is it going to be an option? Is it going to be, you know, are they going to attack the perimeter with them? You know, there's probably a lot of things going through their heads just because we didn't have a lot of film on them. And, uh, you know, some of the things they did initially, like I said, the eye control was an issue. Um, but you're right. It still comes back. You say, Gus, what's the answer? Well, you know, I'm a big believer in you see what you coach. And right now they're not playing very good. So we've got to get it right as a coach. And if you're not demanding it, you're accepting it. 
And that's what the conversation was today, yesterday in the meeting was these things need to get right. And there's accountability throughout. I'll take the shared responsibility. They have to take shared responsibility and together we get it done. And there's, it's a long season. And uh, sometimes through challenging times like this, it can bring you close together. And it, you know, hey, you, you earn the opportunity to rush the quarterback by stopping the run. And we haven't earned that opportunity yet. Joel. Gus, uh, with, with Taven and Tommy, both of those guys have generally profiled more as, as penetrators, pass rushers. Do, do they have stuff they need to get better at from a run standpoint? I, I thought and inside, I thought inside on the inside styled runs. Now, again, like I said, the misfits and things like that. But as far as the D line, like a guy like Tommy and Taven, I thought they held up pretty good. I mean, you can imagine there's 52 runs or whatever it was, and there's probably 47 of them were double teams, you know, on them. And so that that's some heavy work right there. I thought for the most part, they held up pretty good, you know, and they did a good job. They used good technique. Their pad level was low and they strained. So um, that, that was, I don't know if I could have said that last year about Tommy, you know, and I think this year he's done a better job in there. Oh, Kevin. Gus, how much do you guys feel like you need to evolve schematically, if at all? Well, I, somewhat what I'm battling a little bit is we have evolved. You know, you're seeing more five down. You're seeing more, you know, defenses changing the front, um, you know, changing the run fits. And at, at times it might be getting too cute. It might be just saying, hey, let's line up. That's that's really what happened starting in, you know, eight minutes into the second quarter was just like, all right, let's get base and let's do the same thing over and over again where we know exactly how to fit and let's play ball. And I think that you saw him play faster because of it and more aggressively. Um, you know, hey, let's try to get the perfect call. Let's get this. And it was a different, you know, the same run, but it was fit differently in four or five different defenses. So once we went to one defense and said, hey, you're going to get the same look. Now it comes down to just execution. We did execute better. And so it might be more that than the other way. Steven? Hey, Gus. Um, just a, a broad question. Um, you know, with, with this young quarterback that you have, I mean, the way the team has been built, the veteran team, you know, a lot of experience, I think, the thinking was we get everybody to play at a high level and hopefully bring him along with us. Sure. Um, how important is is it for that philosophy, you know, to to play out for, properly, yeah, right? With I, everybody I, else playing at their expected level, and what's sure. the impact negative? I, 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 that's a that's a great question, one that we talk about, Steve, and I and I do think that I think right now we got a young quarterback, and no matter what team you're on then there's going to be times when the offense needs to stand up and the defense needs to stand up throughout the season. But I do think when you have a young quarterback, more times than not, the defense has to stand up and they got to, you know, buy some time for him to get experience and be able to execute at a high level. And right now, although the points, you know, it, it, it you know, if you went in the game and said, Hey, they got yeah. 16 points, you'd say, okay, pretty good. It. But it, yeah. but it didn't feel like that. Right. It doesn't feel like that for me. It doesn't feel like that for the players and it doesn't feel like that for the fans. So there is a responsibility for us, I think on the defensive side to be strong enough and allow that time for his maturity and hold up on our end and keep these points down so that we have a chance for him to progress in that kind of a fashion. Thank you. Last two, we'll go Nate and then Joel. Yeah, with Taven specifically, what is it uh, about his game that you like that, that makes you feel comfortable to kind of start him, uh, you know, if DeForest Buckner is out? Okay. Uh, I, I think, you know, obviously, if I said this, this is probably things that you know about Taven. He is a tough-minded, mentally tough, strains, uh, does everything right. You know exactly where he's going to be and what you can count on, on from him every day. And that part right now, that's what you need, the consistency factor of knowing exactly what you're going to get out of his play. So, you know, we can count on that. He's a swing guy. He can play nose. He can play three. So he gives us flexibility, and he plays both of them, you know, at a, at a consistent level. Then last question, Joel. Uh, what have you seen from your linebackers so far, Gus? Uh, um, 
I think, again, it goes back, if you say a shared responsibility, I think that because of the, some different things that we're doing, uh, I don't think it's allowing them to play as fast as they normally do. And that's not their fault. That's, that's more my fault. I think that you saw them play faster once we locked in and kind of got a good feel how they were attacking us. And I think that, you know, then you saw their level of play increase. So I think it's more of a combination that we have to execute better. Uh, you know, they got to they gotta make the tackles and be on the right fits. But I do think that it slowed down for them as the game went on. Since Gus Bradley, you feel better about the defense now that we heard Gus Bradley talk? I got to tell you, I feel good about Gus Bradley as a guy. I would feel good as a defensive player answering to Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator. I feel like he wants me to play well. I don't feel like my job's in jeopardy. I don't see a, a an urgency in Gus Bradley that would make me nervous. I don't know that that's a good thing. We're going to find out a hell of a lot about this team on Sunday. Either they're going to come out and they're going to play really well against a very challenged offensive Bears team, or it's going to be Chapter 3 of a season where this defense just kind of doesn't show up until it's too late, and I can't have that.